so pumped <laughs> so pumped i got a mic that works those of you who are new here are especially confused by that intro it's okay me too but to keep a short story short i have been making these videos for a right while now and i've tried like three different microphones and every single one of them has made me sound like i'm trapped in a cookie tin or something you all right alistair so I was like, maybe if I want to get rid of the reverb and the echo in the room, I should just get a mic that's closer to my face. Problem solved. That's it for updates. Uh, onward to the spiritual stuff. So we've been talking a lot about spiritual awakenings here on Idea Sex, um, and we've been having this conversation because of this Google search trend. And today I would like to broaden the conversation by talking about a major theme in this whole awakening business, and that is God. Not like Sky Daddy, okay? Not like some old white man with a long beard sitting on a cloud looking down on you and judging you for, for skipping church and making merry and, and fornicating. <laughs> but God in the sense of like universe, source, spirit, um, source field, quantum field, the divine matrix, as Greg Braden calls it, um, we can call it whatever. But what I am referring to is the miraculous unified energy field that underpins all of existence. In the last video, we touched on that idea of one consciousness manifesting as infinite possibilities. And today I want to take a deeper dive into the idea of one consciousness. We're going to do it uh, by idea sexing between some mythology, some religion, and then a whole bunch of science. So we will start with a brief look at uh, some wisdom from our ancestors, and then we're going to roll things forward to modern day quantum physics. And that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time. As far as energetic fields go, the first thing that pops into my head is chi. Uh, specifically, there is a line from the Tao Te Ching, from one came two, from two came three, and from three came all things. And a common interpretation of this is that the one refers to the Tao, right? The infinite, the nameless, and that breaks off into two, yin, yang, duality, polarity, and these give rise to a third, chi or life energy. Um, in Hinduism, this is called prana. In classical Greek thought, it's called ether. In some Polynesian cultures, it is called mana, uh, which is like a vital life force that exists in everything animate, inanimate, and can be drawn on for like healing purposes. So if you've ever <laughs> played basically any RPG game ever, um, and you played a casting class, mana probably sounds familiar to you. This idea of a unified energy field is in mythology as well. Um, there's a Hopi legend of Grandmother Spider. Grandmother Spider waits for the universal mind to awaken, and when it does, and she hears its first thoughts. She begins to sing her weaving song and dance across the sky. From her thread, she spins the web of life, connecting everything everywhere. And so while we mostly experience this lifetime as beings separate from each other, grandmother's web is anchored in us all, connecting us to the great mystery. On a similar note, there is Indra's net from Buddhism and Hinduism. Uh, the god Indra, king of heaven, hangs a net that stretches infinitely in all directions, and from each node, he places a glittering jewel that reflects in itself all other jewels. We're all jewels in this net, and so what we do to ourselves, we do to the net. Any change to one jewel will be reflected in all others. And I think that speaks to a unified energy field. I also <laughs> think it speaks to the fact that reality is holographic, which idea sex for another time. These are just a few stories and ideas that have been passed down to us from our ancestors and speak to this idea of a, of a unified energy field. Um, like a lot of people who are interested in bridging, in connecting science and spirituality, I personally believe that this field is consciousness. As far as we know, <laughs> Consciousness is non-local. We have never been able to pinpoint it in the human brain, and I am convinced that is because we are swimming in it. To quote the physicist Sir James Jean, 
the universe begins to look more and more like a great thought and less and less like a great machine. And actually, the idea of God as a thought is, I think, echoed um, in a lot of our, our, our stories and our scripture, too. Uh, in the Hopi legend, the universal mind, right, in Hermeticism, <clears throat> God is sometimes called the all or the supreme mind. In Gnosticism, there's a line. Oh, my God, what is it? Uh, I forgot it. I had to look it up. So what is it? Ah, God as the mind of the universe, which manages all things. And so I think <clears throat> back to this idea of a unified energy field that maybe is just a giant thought, a giant consciousness. I think a lot of us understand, not understand, a lot of us intuitively feel that's the case. And we're sort of just waiting for technology <laughs> to catch up. So on that note, let's take a look at some of the science that's beginning to speak to this idea of a divine matrix. Don't let quantum physics scare you off like it scared me off for the longest time. I thought you had to be like Michio Kaku or something to understand it. So uh, turns out this flavor of physics is pretty cool because you don't have to understand the math to understand it conceptually. Uh, and thank God, because I'm 23, 5 and 20, 25, and I still count on my fingers. So. I think it makes sense to start with where we've already kind of been, which is quantum entanglement. So if you haven't seen the video on synchronicity, you may want to check that out. Um, that's where we first started talking about quantum entanglement, but my intention here is that this video can stand on its own. So University of Geneva, Switzerland, 1997. A bunch of nerds get together in a room, as nerds do, and what they discover totally defies huh, the way we think reality works. So. Are you ready for this? Are you sure? Um, this blows my mind. Okay, this is so cool. So these scientists take a photon, a, um, a light particle, and they split it to create two particles, two twins. And they take these twins and they fire them down fiber optic tunnels, seven miles in either direction, so that by the time they reach their destination, they are 14 miles apart. At which point, the tunnels branch into multiple routes and What's incredible is every single time they ran this experiment, the twins chose the same route. The implication of that is that these, these little light twins, uh, even after physically separated, remain connected through space somehow. And um, this isn't like new news, even in 1997, we knew about quantum entanglement, but this is just one of many studies that show us that quantum particles can remain connected even at a distance. Okay, but what does this have to do with God? Um, let's try on an idea hat. So if, if we're right about the origin of the universe being the Big Bang, it would follow that everything is connected. The Big Bang was just a bunch of tiny particles stuffed into a single point um, that exploded, right? And everything that exists evolved out of that. Given what we know about the quantum realm, we could hypothesize that all of those particles and everything that evolved out of them remain connected to this very day. And this idea is echoed in a lot of scripture and teachings um, when we talk about a God that is omnipotent and omnipresent. So I'm not saying this is a like for sure thing, it's just an idea, but what if God is this miraculous interconnected energy, uh, this vast field that underpins everything? And actually, let's take a look at some more studies that seem to suggest something just like that. Some other nerds, Paponin and Garrier, which if you ask me sounds like a designer brand, but they're not, they're scientists. Um, Paponin and Garrier decided they were gonna test the influence of DNA on photons. And so what they did is they, they took a test tube and they created a vacuum in it. So the test tube was empty of everything except photons, light particles. And when they observed this test tube, they found exactly what you would expect to find, which is that the photons were randomly scattered throughout the tube. Then they introduced human DNA. And in response to this, the photons rearranged themselves in a pattern around it. Uh, interesting, okay. And then they took the DNA out of the test tube and the photons didn't go back to their original state. They held the pattern. 
just to be clear, there is nothing in, in traditional science that can explain that. Um, the implication seems to be that there is an energetic force at work that we don't really understand yet. To quote Proponin, where was this? Why do I have so many bookmarks? It's like it stops being helpful when there's so many, you know what I mean? Um, aha, I've, I've located it. In his summary, Poponin wrote that he and the researchers were forced to accept the working hypothesis that some new field structure is being excited. Um, my field structure is being excited because this shit is so cool. It kind of sounds like entanglement, but like on a bigger level. So rather than it being particle to particle, staying connected, it's now particle to DNA, or at least the DNA is leaving some kind of like energetic influence on the photon. Um, is this the real life? Is this just sorcery? It's sorcery, I'm convinced. Now let's check out how uh, DNA remains connected to its host across space, or it's, I don't know what you would call it, the person it came off of. The American military runs all kinds of weird, weird experiments. Um, we're totally gonna talk about Project Stargate on this channel. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about something a little less woo-woo, and that is a study that the army did, where they took volunteers and would swab the inside of their mouths to get like a DNA sample, would take that to another room, and then would show the volunteers images, images that were meant to invoke uh, emotions, a full gamut of emotions, right? Um, so all kinds of emotions highs and lows, and in response, the DNA um, showed an electrical response that could be mapped to the highs and lows of the volunteer's emotional state. Uh, what's more, no amount of distance seemed to affect this connection. Uh, it, it, it wasn't even a response. Like The DNA didn't even appear to be responding to the emotional state because it seemed to happen instantaneously, simultaneously. This shows us that human emotion has a direct effect on DNA, even when that DNA is like no longer physically connected to us. Um, that has really interesting implications for health, healing, well-being. Like it makes you wonder what happens when people get transplants, you know? Um, the last study we're gonna look at is a study on how consciousness affects DNA. Similar to the ARMY study, uh, the HeartMath Institute did a study on how feeling, but really consciousness, influences DNA. And if you're not familiar, the HeartMath Institute is a super cool organization. They were founded to study the power of feelings on, on our everything, really, um, but they're best known for the research they've done spearheading heart coherence. And coherence is defined as when our hearts, our minds, and our emotions are in energetic alignment and cooperation. It's something we can actually track through biofeedback. You can get a, like a little thing that plugs into your phone and you can learn how to enter into this state. Um, granted, they didn't have smartphones back in the 90s when they were first conducting these experiments, but HeartMath trained some people up in coherence and then had them um, do this study and or this experiment and in the experiment they had these these people enter into the coherent state and focus their consciousness on beakers full of human dna and what they found is that the dna would either coil or uncoil in response to the intention being directed at it and that opens up like a world of possibilities um in the last video, we talked about how thoughts influence emotion and emotion creates our reality. But this, like studies like this give it a very literal twist. And in fact, in the last half of the Divine Matrix, Greg Braden goes kind of law of attraction on us and um, <laughs> makes the argument that our reality is just a reflection of our most deeply held beliefs. He, he postulates that through our emotions, we are in constant communication in a dialogue with this energetic matrix. Taken together, these studies could imply that one, a matrix of energy exists and connects all things, and two, through our own consciousness, we can influence 
this matrix. I've said it before and I will say it again, space is not the final frontier, consciousness is. And what's really throwing a wrench in things for us is that mainstream science doesn't see itself as being compatible with spirituality. I think that's changing. I really hope it is because um, if, if we could prove that quantum principles apply on the macro level, right? So not just, uh, not on the quantum level, but also on it, in our everyday lives, it would explain so many different spiritual concepts and new ageisms. Like just to use quantum entanglement as an example, quantum entanglement, if it applies on the macro level, could explain everything from synchronicity to soul connections, uh, soul mates, soul tribe, twin flames. It could explain psychic phenomena that involve remembering forward, which we talked about in the synchronicity video. It could explain, um, well, and then if, if a quantum field exists, like we talked about it today, that could explain everything from remote viewing, telepathy, um, the law of attraction, quantum jumping, alternative healing, all of which we will be diving into here on IdeaSex. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, send it along to someone, instigate some IdeaSex. Um, and until next time, stay blessed. <laughs> and then I threw it on the ground. Do you like that? Fuckity fuck, dude. <laughs> You're so all over the place tonight. This is taking me hours to film. Hours. <laughs> idea of a. That was weird. What the fuck? Okay. Anyway. I don't have any sage. Whatever. Um, my good vibes will just burn you alive. So fuck off. <laughs>